heard he caught two nine pounders and a nine 13 or 12. The channel catfish, they stay active in the wintertime. The flatheads are all, they're hibernating and everything. The walleyes and the occasional pike will come through, you know, so yeah. When you come down here, you're not gonna be bored, you're gonna catch something all the time. There you go. Oh, yeah, nice catfish. Hey, and my other bobber's going down. <laughs> Scott Sparlin has been fishing the Minnesota River since his college days when he moved to New Ulm. Sparlin started the New Ulm area's Sport Fisherman Club in 1987. That group, which became the Coalition for a Clean Minnesota River, has led the way in improving the fishing in the river. Good luck. Yeah, thanks. thanks. This afternoon, the last day of the walleye season, Scott's got plenty of company on the ice. This river's got big walleyes in it. Else Swank almost got a state record walleye down here. Well, 29. 29, yeah, yeah. I got land right. Uh, in the summer, I got two tens there on the wall at home. Right there, on the wall paper. Yeah. 28 and three quarter and 26 and a quarter inch. Well, All summer, I catch walleye too. Yeah. Down at Riverside, on that sandbar there. Yep, yep. I love that. It's so yeah. fun. Uh, the support is out there. Can't beat it. You, know. you don't have to go up to Mille Lacs, you don't have to go anywhere. You can just fish. It's right in town. Right downtown New Ulm. Secret spot. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't just the fish that Scott wanted us to see. He had a homemade secchi disc, a device used for measuring water clarity. I got a fisherman's secchi disc. That's the old airplane jig, and that's what we put down the hole to see how far down we could see it. That's about how far down you can see in the summertime here in New Ulm, about 11 inches if you're lucky, certain times of the year. <laughs> now we're gonna take it down in the winter time and see how far we can see that. And she's going down, can still see her moving. I'm gonna say we're at about eight to nine feet. Yeah, 16 pounds, one ounce. Cause there's a picture of in the north. Four and a half months of the year, this river is running crystal clear, clear as a bell. Because what we're dealing with right now is groundwater. Worldwide, all rivers, are basically 50% groundwater. And uh, you can see your lure. This is something that I think is very thought provocative. And I think it's something that maybe the professionals need to ponder on as they seek solutions to the Minnesota River's pollution issues. If the fishing is getting better, that must mean the water is getting cleaner. Here near Seven Mile Creek between Mankato and St. Peter, DNR fishery scientists are studying that hypothesis. Using a small charge of electricity, they stun, catch, and record the size and species of the fish they find. 325. From emerald shiners to flathead catfish. We easily identify a walleye or a catfish as being valuable because we catch it and eat sport fish. The health and well-being of the fish that we desire is dependent on the diversity and the availability of these other species to these sport fish. All right, channel cat, seven, seven, zero. We take some basic water chemistry stuff. Like now, I'm just looking at the clarity, so we got an idea how how far we can see in the water when we're doing the shocking. With electrofishing, it's all about being able to see down into the water. And on here, it reads. 19 centimeters, but you can just goes up to 60. If you can see more than 60, it's really clear, obviously. And 19's uh, so-so, it's not great, but it's not terrible bad either. Fish are shocked. You're trying to cause what's called force swimming up toward the top of the water, especially when you're dealing with extremely turbid water conditions. Everything we see, we basically net, we bring it in, we weigh and measure it. Recently, as the 50s, a uh, professor at the university that wrote a book about the distribution of Minnesota fishes did seine hauls out there and really found peas and carrots from canning factories as well as human waste from unsewered communities in his seine hauls and not surprisingly, very few fish. And that fish weighs 465. By taking those scales, we just get to see how many year classes there are. If we're seeing multiple year classes, we know we've got reproduction going on somewhere in the system. And, and that's a good sign when you have reproduction. Boy, they're in great shape. Fish communities integrate all the decisions that are made on the land. And so if you've got a habitat and water quality sensitive species like a paddlefish or a blue sucker or a black buffalo, these are indications that there's enough high quality habitat for some of these species to start re-entering the river 
and hopefully start having self-reproducing populations. And some of these will provide good angling recreation for citizens. Beautiful shape, so robust. Recent surveys have showed over 70 different species of fish are now found in the Minnesota River. Some of them are really sensitive to water quality and other habitat parameters. I've been impressed so far. I mean, we've really had a lot of species here. I mean, we probably have 25 to 30 species of fish, and that's the diversity, and, uh, and especially species like the smallmouth bass. You see the walleye, of course. But a lot of those minnow species, too, are good indicators that, you know, think good things are at least beginning to occur here in the Minnesota. We certainly got to be watching the fish in it because that's one of the big recreational aspects of the river. The public's starting to demand it. They want us to be out here working on this resource and taking care of it. And, and they should because this is a tremendous resource and it's getting more and more attention all the time. They're actually one of the species that they do target out here, especially even as you get down toward the cities.